thing. And uh, we both need to try and show you. That's why whenever this world don't come out, it's going to cut people up. Because it ain't for everybody. It's only for the Israelites. And they hate that. Because we, 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 we know this ain't Christ no more. So we ain't been less than this no more. Now we, now we like, we know who Christ is. We know Christ looked like us. We know Christ gave us commandments. We know Christ told us we are better than what we've been taught to believe throughout all our generations. Up until now, Israel is waking up, brother. I'm going out into the streets now. I'm already in FedEx. And a lot of people see my friends under my, under my uniform, they say, Shalom, brother. They don't even have friends on. But the fact that, that they know who they are. Right. Man, this world coming out. Said, don't do it, you shouldn't be doing it when you're talking not to do it. Give me Matthew 10 34. Read that for me. Let's start there. So, brother, was Christ killed? They, they, they crucified Christ, right? You gotta ask yourself if Christ was all love and kisses and hugs and all that good, beautiful stuff, why did they kill him? Yeah, why, they, why, why would they kill Christ? If he was there, if he was just loving, just I love everybody, I just want to be there, I just want to, I just want to hug you. Everybody, everybody join a big old circle on hands and hug each other. Man, how you go, God is the man of war, and his son is just like him. And the Israelites are what's a man of war too. Now, go to Matthew 10 and 34. Let me show you this, bro. The book of Matthew. 10 and 34. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Before I get that, bro, what's your name? All right, Jared, 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 right? Nice to meet you, man. I'm Brother Jerry. So this is our congregation called Children of the Promise. And we come out here every Sabbath to teach our people the word, to show our people who they are. And give me a head that spot real quick. And give me a head that spot real quick. And give me a head that Because, did you know God don't go with the certain people? Yeah, and you know who they are? Who? There you go. So we already we already established that, huh? Right. And you know you part you know you part of that, don't you? So which tribe you from? Judah. Give it up for Judah. Here's the king. Right. Here's the king. Right. That's right. Let's do it. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse one. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side, during in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, and spoke unto the twelve, 12 tribes of Israel. Go to. The twelve tribes, he's speaking to the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, go back to uh, Matthew 10. Now, give me Amos 3 and 1, that's what I wanted. Amos 3 and 1. Just establish it, just in case anybody else here and they listen to this. Just establish something. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up. In the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So cry God, let it be known right then and there. I only deal with Israel. And I'm only gonna punish you for your iniquities. I ain't worried about nobody else. Go to uh second Ezra six. And I believe it's is it thirty six and fifty four. Let's get that. Chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest the Lord. Hold on. And after these, Adam also, who, did, who thou madest, Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. Also, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world of our saints. So, God made the world for Israel's sake. That means we put away that question of, Everybody, God care about everybody. God, we have to establish that. No, that, that, that's why we in the mess we in now as a people. Because we so concerned about everybody else. And God himself said, I'm a, y'all worry about y'all. I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm here for y'all. Don't worry about everybody else. Because everybody else, the other, you said they both were enslaved, and slaves. Like both of them early, you said that your back look like that. They, they ripped our faith out of us. And that's who we are concerned about. So that's why whenever, go to 1 Peter 4 and 
That's why whenever this world don't come out, it's going to cut people up because it ain't for everybody. It's only for the Israelites. And they hate that. Because we, 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 know, we know this ain't Christ no more. So we ain't believe that thing is just no more. Now we, now we like, we know who Christ is. We know Christ looked like us. We know Christ gave us commandments. We know Christ told us we are better than what we've been taught to believe throughout all our generations. Up until now, Israel is waking up, brother. I'm going out into the streets, man. I wear the FedEx. And a lot of people see my friends under my, under my uniform. They say, Shalom, brother. They don't even have friends on. But the fact that, that they know who they are. Right. Man, this world coming out. And that's why I praise God for you, uh, DeAndre, that you're here, man, because that shows, man, it's the world getting out. Right. But now God wants you to their friends and do that work, too. Right. You know what I'm We're looking for good soldiers, man. And we look, you look like one of them. Uh, in First Peter 4, what, what, you, uh, what you got? You want to bring that out? 2 and 9 or something. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. That ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Peculiar people, that means different. Right. We're supposed to look odd to everybody. Right. So when we out here blending in, we know we ain't doing right. We're peculiar people. Now we're on First Peter uh, 4 and uh, 2. First Peter. Yeah, yeah. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 2 That he no longer should live the rest of his time And the flesh to the lust of men so When you become, when you start keeping lust You no longer live after the lust of men Now you live after the spirit of God What he wants, what he says right, Do you eat pork? Do you eat shrimp? Any of that stuff? Oh, but, but, you, but you know you gotta stop though So if you once you get control of that flesh, man, you start living out the spirit, because that flesh, that spirit take over. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to show you why, why, why that's happened to you, though. Go to Amos 3 and uh, 2. And that's all, it's understood, it's understandable. Amos chapter 3 and verse 2. You only have I known. Verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Be agreed? I want that, uh... So you gotta, you gotta have to walk with somebody that's agreeing with you. Okay, now I want that, uh, two are better than one. While he's getting that, so... Oftentimes, bro, we... We fail because we think we can do it by ourselves. Right. You need brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like these brothers, we all keep each other grounded. You know what I'm saying? We keep him. That's why you heard him up a teacher. He out here getting his feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Learning how to teach, learning how to deal with our brothers and sisters. Because questions going to put, when you walk around these friends on, somebody's going to pull you to the side and ask you a question. And right. you, it's your job to answer them. We can't shy away from those questions. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got, that, that's, that's our duty. So, when you walk by yourself, there's nobody to help you. You know what I'm saying? Right? You got that from me? Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, they will really lift up his fellow. See that? Because if you fall, two better than one. Because if you fall, that brother going to be there to lift you up. If your brother see me going off, he going to say, Jerry, you're slipping. Come back to us. He going to hit me with some rebuke. And, I, and vice versa. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, it's, it's love. Yeah, it's because you're going to study the scriptures. And when you see sin, the scripture going to come alive. Automatically, what sin your brother or sister or yourself is in. Because, so when you see somebody off, they're going to tell you. When you're going to tell them. And they're going to tell you if you're off. It's, it always gotta, it, it's good to open the Bible up each time, but if you can't get your Bible, just being able to say, hey, bro, you know you're in sin. Thou shalt not uh, cover thy neighbor's wife. Because right. a brother comes to you talking about some. Man, I know, I know Beyonce married to Jay-Z, but I just can't get enough. I just can't get kicked. I just, I want to. Then you guys like, bro, you know that's another man's wife. You ain't probably looking at her, bro. That's, it's just the, scripts, the scriptures are going to come to mind automatically. That's why you study. That's why it's good to have a congregation, because you know you're going to come together, all in classes, 
uh, fellowship and it's a standard that's up here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, <laughs> I do got a question. Man, the most high, you know what's funny? I know it's Spanish, I know, uh, basic, mm. but how do you the exact thing say, uh, you know, I just need the exact answer of how you propose to pray. Give uh, me two answers. First answer, all the Psalms are prayers. All of them. You can go to Psalms, not Psalms, yeah, yeah, go to Psalms, mm -hmm. yes, part time, got a King James Version Bible, and if you got a phone, download the King James Version app, okay? Go to Psalms and read all the books. You ain't got to read them all. Like, now, you ain't got to read them all at once. But those are prayers. They're David's prayers. They teach us how to pray. And you can use them. You, you can actually pray those prayers when you pray. When you face the homeland, which is the east, with your hands lifted up. But let's get the how another way. Let's get this. So Psalms are prayers. Then you go to the Apocrypha and you get the prayer of Azariah, which is uh, either Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego. I can't remember exactly which one it is. But they have a prayer now. You can read that and show you how to pray. Now go to Matthew six and let's start at verse one. This is how the Most High told us to pray. Christ told us to pray like this, and you know Christ is not the Spirit of the Most High. So you will catch me saying the Most High ain't Christ back and forth. The Book of Matthew chapter six and verse one. Take heed that you do not take heed that you do not your arms before men. We get into it. Christ said, "Don't take heed that you don't do your arms in front of men. You know, arms are good deeds." Uh, given to the congregation, given to your brother or your sister that may be in need. And what it says is, uh, we again, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. When you do your arms, when you do good, everybody got to know what you're doing. Just do it. And don't do it to get nothing. Do it because you love your brother and your sister. Right? Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in him. Because you get your, if, you do it, if you do it to get praise from men, I mean, I'm bragging, like, you see them videos on YouTube of guys doing nice things for homeless people, anybody? That's bragging. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't right. You, you, you humiliating that homeless person. They probably don't want their family to see them like this. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to do your own. When you do something good for somebody, it should be between you and the most high. All right, go ahead. So this is a form of prayer, all right? Arms is a form of prayer. Therefore, when thou doest thy arms, do not sell a trumpet before thee. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Oh. Don't do nothing for the glory of men. Nothing. Verse 3. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy arms may be in secret, and thy father will see it in secret himself. Getting to the point of how you pray. So, because have you ever seen people when they pray? A lot of people pray, they go to a restaurant, they sit down and they pray. They hold hands, they're in a circle. Some people stand on the corners and do it. Yeah. And they want people, and there's a spirit on them. They want people to see them and say, oh, those, those are holy people. But Christ said not so. Look. And thy father who see it in secret himself shall reward thee open. You do things the right way, because you keep, ultimately what you're doing is you're keeping a commandment. When Christ, God, Christ said do it this way, you're keeping a commandment. So you're going to get your reward from God. And when thou prayest, thou, this is how you pray, brother, okay? Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they learn to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They, praise, they have their reward, praise of men. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into a closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which is in secret shall reward thee open. So when you pray, brother, you're supposed to find you a, a place where ain't nobody else at. You can go in your bedroom, close your door. Go in your bathroom, close your door. And if your closet big enough, go in there. And you face the homeroom and you pray with lifted up hands. But this is how you're supposed to pray. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Don't go in there praying to God saying, Lord, Lord. Give me this, give me that, and don't constantly the same thing over and over again. Alright? Be not ye therefore like unto them. 
For your father's month, what things ye have need of. So God, when you pray to God, don't ask him multiple times for the same thing. Well, I don't want to say that. Don't ask, don't be out like asking God to, oh God, I need this bill paid. God, I need this bill paid. God, the, 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 uh, my job doing this. My job doing that. God, this. The God knows what you have need of. So this is what you pray for. Be not therefore like unto them, for the Father knows what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. I, this is how you pray. So he could always go, go, when you pray to God, always go to him knowing what you, he already knows what you have need of. He, he knows your situation. He put you there. Right. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that we be born in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So, when you pray to God, pray, that's what you pray. The Lord's prayer. Yeah. There you go. And you pray, always pray. This is the main thing you should always pray for. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And pray for the fear of God. Pray for to know all the commandments. And pray to do them. That's what wisdom, knowledge, and understanding means. And remember what I told you about the Psalms. So remember what I said. Always go, you can go to Psalms for references for how to pray. But remember what I said, God is the one who put you here in your situation. So he already knows what's going on with you financially. He knows what's going on with you. Uh, he knows he know all that stuff. He knows that you lack understanding as well. So when you pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, he's going to give it to you abundantly. He don't, he don't hold back on that. Go to Sirach 2 and 1. I'm gonna, this, this I'm going to let you know because this is DeAndre. You know you're an Israelite. And you know you said a prophet for the world. And you know God has a vision for you. So this is where I'm going to get you this. I already understand this. Because one thing I know I'm, uh, a lot of us struggle with this when we come in and keep the commandments. We tend to start to feel like everything going to be smooth sailing now. But this is actually when things get harder. Because you no longer live after the flesh. Now you live with a spirit of discipline. So things actually get harder. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, DeAndre, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You gotta fight off that pork, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, it's worse than when you go back. It is. You're going to be worse off. So, go to Matthew chapter 7. So, what I'm going to say is this. Did you get a flyer? Alright. I want you to uh, do this, man. If you really if you really desire to, if you desire to build a congregation, our doors are open. And we, we, we out here recruiting, man, trying to get our people into God's commandments. Okay. Oh, so you can't, so you can't even listen. So, always, what you can do, brother, every Saturday at, at 4, 435, that range, we always got a live class. And you're welcome to get on there, listen to the class, type your name in the chat, so we, and let us know you're there. Give us a thumbs up or a shout out. If you do that three weeks in a row, show your consistency, and you, so you got a car. Yeah, no. Well, you got you to, but you got some, I mean, I mean that's all. That's all need to be said. You can, after three weeks of consistency, you can come to class, man. And, you know, and we'll give you our visitor's package. We'll give you our full understanding so you'll know how to conduct yourself in class and what we as your brothers expect from you and how to even deal with the women around the congregation. Because it's, it's, it's rules and bylaws that we go by. All right? So, with that said, man, if you, want, if you really seek it, come join us, man. Come join us. Become a member of Children of the Promise. And get out here so you can be out here with us. Right. Teaching God's word. Right. You know Because you got that here. It's all you strong. So with that being said, what did I tell you to do? Matthew 7. Why do I want that? The spirits. <laughs> anyway, I get, I get so long of the talking man sometimes. I, be, I, I, I lose my train of thought. But did you have any more questions about prayer? Or, or, you know, 
Uh, you can say Yahweh, you can say God. It don't matter. He, he, go, he has a. Uh, uh, when you're really speaking of Christ, because Christ is the mediator between man and God. So you're really speaking of Christ. God is the one. God is getting that. Remember, um, God is getting that will from Christ. From you. God, Christ is the one that called you. Well, how was I say? Yeah. Because you, cause, remember, when you read the Bible, who are you talking to? Who did who, 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 who the God wears, right? It's Christ. Give me a... Uh, uh, John for, uh, 1 and 14. So, well, yeah, when you pray, when you pray, you often talk, you're talking through Christ. And Christ is, who, is that mediator between you and God. But how Christ is the mediator is He's the commandments. You have that connection by Him by keeping God's words, by keeping the commandments. John 4, uh, John 1 and 14. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 14. And the world was made flesh, and the world among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. So, that's the, so the word of God is Christ. Right. So when you keep the commandment, that's how that's your connection to him. So when you go in there, you, when you go in your closet and you face the homeland and you pray with your hands lifted up, you can pray Matthew 6 and uh, 9 through. You can you can pray one of the Psalms. Or you can say God. I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You can make it simple like that. And so you can say a prayer, but these are good references on how to say those prayers. But ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because that's, that's what he's going to give you. He's going to give you that. He's going to give you that spirit of discipline. Uh, Psalms 111 and verse 10. Because ultimately what's going to increase is your fruit. And God, if you keep asking him for that, and you truly desire it, because once you kind of get to your, if you, you know, we don't want you to go to your lowest estate. But if you do get to that point, you're going to start beating yourself up like, man, I really want to come out of this mess. Right. And you're going to start begging God and God don't hear you. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the understanding of all day that do his commandments. Remember, understanding is knowing the commandments. Right. And you're doing them. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you pray for wisdom, your spirit, your fear is going to increase. That's what it is, man. Like all the fear that we have for God, that's why we are here today. Cause we fear. And I know you say you uh you back and forth on that that pork thing, but just. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I completely know. Okay. Well, let me just put the, the fear of the Lord back in there a little bit more. Just one time. First Corinthians chapter three and sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Remember that. You the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God is supposed to dwell in you. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Not that, not that way, 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 way down the road. Don't defile your temple by any sin. Keep this clean for God, man. Let that fear increase inside you. I just wanted to hit you with that. You know what I'm saying? So you'll know, DeAndre, man, that's who you are. You ain't, you ain't just some man, man. You ain't Esau. You ain't some guy walking around. You, you're an Israelite. Right. And God called you. That's why you're here today. Right. Got any more questions? Give me Psalm 19 too. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 3. Verse, verse 3. There is no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. That's when we're talking about prayer. There's no speech, no language. When you're talking to God, you, 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 you know who you're talking to. You don't hear. Okay, so when it's talking about this, hold on real quick. When it's talking about this, it's saying because you have that heart. Your fear, if your fear is towards God, and you and you really seeking to serve Him, He hears you. But when you're a sinner, that word is uh, that's who you are. A sin, God don't hear the prayers of sinners because they are active sinners. Yeah.